and say, hello, everybody, where we're sitting. It's Monday, November 20th, 2023, and almost at 2024. And I'm, Not yet. I'm, I'm learning into yeah. the future already. Mm -hmm. And um, this is Jim and Jory uh, back in Maui after being gone for a month and feeling really happy to be here. How are you? Oh, I'm delighted just to look at your faces. I haven't seen most of you in a while. I just, oh, it's like family, you know, family's coming back to visit us, at least online. It's very sweet. So uh, we we did just get back from our journey to Maui, uh, to uh, Bali and to Japan, where we had a great time uh, at the IIT and also with a couple of retreats in Japan. So we started our journey in Japan at, uh, with um, Train. certified trainers that are there. <clears throat> and we just hung out and started getting used to the time change and so forth. And we were in Osaka. Osaka. And, and the, I keep trying to train him how to say it. Yeah. Osaka. Okay, so you were the expert in Japan. We should actually ask Shizuka. How to yeah, say right. It. So anyway, uh, <laughs> we were um, we enjoyed that. And then we took off to Bali and spent about 12 days in Bali, including me, uh, us missing a flight on my my part. So that was a lot, very exciting. Yeah, we were in the middle of nowhere with no phones or anything. And someone said, wasn't your time to go to the airport yesterday? <laughs> this morning at 1 a.m.? Yeah, so anyway, I made a math error. And um, so that meant you know the the consequence the terrible consequence was we had to spend two extra days in bali and uh, hang out with our oh. friends uh, jesse and Catherine. <laughs> and then uh, we went uh, back to japan to hang out with candidates and by now in japan it's chilly so we go from spring in, or fall like weather at the beginning of, of the month in japan then we go to hot summer bali weather and then we go to very fallish, chilly, not good for Jim's bones um, weather in Japan for the last week or so. But we had a good time. Yeah. There's a lot of warmth generated by our connection with people. Yeah. And we did bring warm clothes. <laughs> yeah. And we borrowed stuff too. Yeah, and we did. <laughs> so we're good. To, it's good to be back. We're here in the beginning of uh, what's Thanksgiving week here in the United States. And Thanksgiving is the, it's like kind of this strange thing where we put aside one day of the year to express gratitude. And uh, I'd like to just maybe take one day off a year from expressing gratitude and, and just get into the habit of expressing gratitude every day. So we're going to work on that today. A new strategy that I'm going to um, be using for the next year that I wanted to share with you guys <clears throat> that um, hopefully will open that gratitude channel even more. <clears throat> And so let's just start with a little um, self-connection. Um, I'd play a little uh, Marshall, invite Marshall into the room with us, talking about gratitude. So some of you, we, we, we listened to part of this, um, this video a few weeks ago, but I thought we would just revisit it and kind of get us into the mood mm -hmm. for, um, for exploring gratitude today. So let me get that right page up. There he is. There's Marshall. No. Whoops. No. Anyway. There we go. Hmm. No sound. There it goes. Okay, now what I'd like to do in the precious time that we have left, uh, deal with a very important part of giraffe, because I wouldn't want you to get the idea that uh, nonviolent communication is solely interested in conflict resolution, because it's equally interested in celebration. How can we celebrate life? In fact, the part that I've left for 10 minutes before the end is, uh, in some respects, the most important part, because it's where we get the fuel to stay giraffe in a, what's often a very jackalish world. See? So it's going to be pretty hard to make this radical transformation into back to our nature in many situations unless we're getting plenty of fuel. Now where does the fuel come from? The fuel comes from celebration. 
And what kind of celebration? Comes from saying thank you in giraffe. So let's see now in the last minutes how we celebrate by saying thank you in giraffe, expressing gratitude in giraffe. So we're going to actually do First, that. I'd like to remind Oops. you of how Jacqueline Jacqueline said it done. We're going to actually practice that. So right now, just think about a situation recently where somebody made your life more wonderful. You can you don't need to write this one down. This will just be like a self connection exercise. Just think of some gift that you received from somebody. Bring the person to mind. Just think about what gift did you receive from them? Maybe they held the door open for you, or they sent you an email, or they made a meal for you, or it could be 10,000 things. Just think of one thing, one simple thing that somebody did that made your life more wonderful and bring it to mind. And just Close your eyes as you just do that part. And just notice how your body starts to feel as you just realized <clears throat> that somebody made your life more wonderful. And then in, enhance the fuel source by considering what need of yours was fed by receiving this gift from this person in your life. In other words, why did you enjoy receiving this gift? How did it contribute to you? And as you connect to the need or the needs that were satisfied by that act, that someone else did for you, again, tune back into the body and notice how your body feels. And focus on that feeling right now. This person gave you a gift that contributed in a certain way. How does your body feel right now? Explore your whole body and how it's responding, especially the area in the core of your body, your belly, your chest, your throat. What are the sensations that you notice? This is the fuel source that Marshall was talking about is <clears throat> celebrating and then savoring the feelings in your body. And then just imagine as that this person <clears throat> is in front of you and just say thank you to them in your own way. How would how could you let this person know how you feel about the gift? that they gave you. Just imagine a little conversation. And as you deliver your message of appreciation, just notice how their body might be responding. What do you see? Are they receiving this gratitude with openness or are they uncomfortable? Sometimes it's uncomfortable to receive gratitude. So you're just there in empathy. Just imagine that you're just with them however they receive your message.
And then just imagine what they might say to you. And let yourself take that in. And go back to your body. There's been a new stimulus. Now you're going to check your body to see how it is for you to receive that. Be with this new feeling. And then connect it to your need. Why are you feeling that? And then just let it go when you're ready. You can open your eyes. <clears throat> Don't worry if it didn't make much sense or you didn't really connect totally as deeply as you wanted to. We'll be doing it again in a different way. This is just kind of beginning to prime ourselves for our practice today. But first, we want to give you the chance to check in with each other. Um, we have a bunch of groups that Drury and I have set up for you. Almost all the groups are. And there's a couple. There's a couple that are two. No. I'm still on the three. Oops. Now oh, that just changed. Whoops. Okay. So we'll do that. And um, if you don't want to be in a group, uh, you can just put an equal sign in front of your name. And we'll we'll do this uh, activity. We'll we'll do the small group check in <clears throat> for about uh, 13 minutes. You'll see a timer on your upper right hand corner of the screen um, <clears throat> that will count down from 12, and there'll be one minute for you to finish. So when the when it flashes that the meet that the breakout room is over, just sit on your hands. Don't do what I did this morning on another Zoom call and push the button because then you end up leaving prematurely. So, uh, what do you do in the in the small group? Just express your how you your name, how you are in the moment, and uh, what's um, how you are affected by the self connection exercise, and then make room for the other person to express. And you get to listen and so forth. So most of the groups are three. There's one group of two at this point. And you might have someone show up in your group after we get going. All right, so see you back here in 13 minutes. Here comes everybody back. All right. So if you're here for the first time, um, we're kind of following our normal pattern with a little self-connection exercise and then a chance to check in in small groups. And now we're all back here together again in the large group with the opportunity to, for anybody who would like to, to share with a large group, whatever, whatever you would like, maybe about the self-connection exercise or if there's something else going on that you would like to be heard about. <clears throat> so if you want to do that, you can raise your hand uh, by clicking on the little raise hand button on the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you have the latest Zoom software, it just says raise your hand down there now. And if it, if it doesn't, then there should be something that says reactions and you can raise your hand there. Go ahead, so Tanya. Tanya knows how to do that. Yeah, Tanya's <laughs> modeling for us. Go ahead, Tanya. You're, you're not on the there. Yeah, <laughs> there uh, so I want to express gratitude to Jen for for doing the tech for all the groups when you were gone. It was, it was really lovely to see Jen. And I think it was really helpful to the um the speakers to the to not have to do that part so and um as usual jen it was flawless so thank you yeah thank thanks you, jen thank you thank you and thanks tanya for expressing yeah. expressing that how's it for you to receive that jen yeah it's sweet and in our in our beginning meditation i was thinking too i yeah it was a real gift to be asked that met lots of needs that in a few minutes to savor and explore like yeah new connections working with new people experiencing community yeah it was an honor so thank you oh thank you thank you yeah and uh rob uh oh yeah my dog is growling here uh <laughs> birdie <laughs> uh -huh. that's not nbc would you you don't mean my need for uh 
attention, whatever, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I going to say? I was going to say that I felt like my, uh, you know, I wasn't, uh, it kind of didn't meet my need for uh, a Jim and Jory hit to come to your group when Jim and Jory weren't there. So that's not a good way to put it. But yeah, my need for learning or just familiarity, I guess, or, you know, just, uh, I love you guys. But, uh, and I felt my, I saw my, my skills in this month, you know, I felt like I was looking in the mirror view, rear view mirror before, but now I was looking in the rear view mirror, the rear view mirror, you know. And uh, so anyways, I just appreciate you guys being back. And uh, like uh, I told the group, I have a situation uh, that I want to, you know, bring an MVC where I usually would just avoid the person. But uh, yeah, I want to get my skills back up. All right. All right. Let's do it. I really uh, appreciate that intention to practice. Yeah. 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 Great. Thanks, Rob. And somebody else want to share anything? Especially if you have any reaction to that brief self-connection exercise where just imagining uh, offering gratitude to somebody that worked for you or if it didn't work for you, if you have any questions about that. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Carolyn. Oops, I, see, I think you need to unmute. And Julia. Remember this, no. I never remember. Um, yeah, so I just say that I um, found it to be a really lovely exercise. And, uh, yeah, you know, bringing me to an open heart that I could feel. Um, it was very lovely, and uh, I and thinking of it as the fuel um, that 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 gets you there is um, very wonderful. So uh, you know, and I'm I'm not always expressing gratitude. I think I have trouble receiving it. So so it was a very nice exercise that um, I felt uh, uh, very good about. And um, yeah, so thank you, Jim. You're welcome. And Jim. Sounds like it met some needs for learning and, and stretching into new things and, and self-reflection that you notice some things about yourself. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, cool. And uh, Janelle, I think you had your hand up for a second and yeah. disappeared. I was going to contribute because you asked a question, but when Carolyn stepped in, I was happy to skip, but I'll go ahead. Um, what I noticed when I imagined actually saying the words um, and then hearing their response, it was like this deeper, even deeper level of joy and happiness in my heart that I honestly hadn't expected. Um, I was really curious about the, that it could deepen it, um, not just me feeling it, but actually hearing back a difference that that made for the other person. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Sometimes Jory and I call this the the easy way to practice uh, NBC uh, because you, we're using all the same skills, but it's not a conflict situation. It's a celebration situation. And so NBC is um, uh, something that can be uh, life-giving and life-serving, whether you're in the midst of a conflict or whether you're in the midst of a celebration. And so we're going to focus on, um, on, on an another way to celebrate. This is going to be my my request for the candidates that I work with and of myself for the next year to do the practice that I'm going to uh, prototype with you guys today. It's a written practice, uh, and it actually is going to take the form of an email or a, a regular um, handwritten note, if you prefer. So just choose which format that you want to practice in, either handwriting or email first as your first step. Or online. Any kind of online thing? Yeah. Yeah. But something where you can kind of write a rough draft. And then pick uh, pick who you want to send it to. And, and just to start with, you can part, use the word dear, which is how we typically start a letter in English, but you don't have to do that. But So mine's going to start with um, dear Romy. And you'll learn more about Romy in a few minutes, <laughs> but dear Romy. So you start with who you want to express this gratitude to.
and then open your note. How do you want to say it to them? Okay, and then think about what's something that this person did for you that you really want to acknowledge, that you want to celebrate with them. What gift did they give you? So in my case, uh, Romy, um, uh, Romy is a resident of Nara, Japan, and uh, Romy um, took us around her town. Mm -hmm for, she spent about nine hours with us that day. Yes, yes. About, she spent nine hours of her life showing us Nara. So that'd be the brief observation. So what's the brief thing that that um, that the person, uh, the gift that you received the person so that they can get have a frame of what it is that you wanna to talk to them about. So mine would be, dear Romy, I'm savoring the fact that we spent the day together in Nara last week. So you just uh, completed the observation part, right? You you chose someone that you want to express to, and you told them the observation of what made your life more wonderful. So then tell them why you're writing this. What needs of yours were satisfied when the person did whatever it was? What needs of yours were satisfied when the person did whatever they did? So in my case, it would be, Dear Romy, thank you so much for spending the day with us in Nara last week. It really contributed to a sense of ease and flow, uh, learning and fun for me. So what were the needs that are, uh, are alive for you when you consider the gift that you received?
Anybody need some help with this uh, finding your needs? I'm happy to help you if you don't quite know how yet to express it. Okay. Sometimes people ask how many needs um, would be optimal to express. I don't know. What I notice is that um, that uh, one can be really sweet to savor, two can be sweeter, three three is like um, three is like uh, uh, it gets kind of heady after a while. Well, three, three, I was going to say three is the real sweet spot for me. Oh, is it? Yeah, I love threes. There's something in English called a triptych, which is groups of three, and they really they they fit into the brain in a certain way. But beyond three, mm -hmm. then I start to get a little lost. Yeah, I know for some people it might be two, or or yeah. you know, it might be too many. But um, it's like move. It start to move from our hearts of receiving into our head of uh, uh huh. Uh -huh. It just becomes a list. Yeah. <laughs> so. I don't know that there's a right answer. So you can just kind of experiment with what's alive in you. And you've heard um, things like this. You know what has worked for you. That's probably what would work for other people. Yeah, maybe. So then the, the next thing that you want to add in your, um, uh, in your letter is how do you feel right now? So how, how might you start this in this with um, right now? For me, I would might say right now as I remember our day together, I feel... So right now, as I remember blank, I feel, might be one way of saying it. I'll put it in the chat. So mine would be um, right now, as I remember spending uh, that time together um, in Nara, I feel warm, warm and grateful and touched. I'm gonna go for three, warm, grateful and touched. Now we've done the observation, <clears throat> the need or needs, the feeling. So what's left would be the request. What would you like back? <coughs> what would what would really contribute to deepening your sense of connection with this other person? Would you like to know how they feel receiving your gratitude, for example? Or is there something else? that you'd like to ask them. <clears throat> so requests usually end with a question mark. So what would you ask to finish up your letter? I'm coming up with an action request, uh, surprisingly. It would be, um, I'm so curious, um, um, if you would be willing to tell me what you remember about our day together. She might remember something that I don't remember and it might just increase the sense of connection. Anybody need some help with um, editing your letter or your email? Okay. Then let's go back to um, small groups. 
and you can talk about this experience with your small group. And then when we come back, we'll do the next step. So again, this will be pretty short, about 12 minutes again. So everybody have about three or four minutes. Uh, yeah, go ahead, uh, Asta. Yeah, I was just uh, thinking um, when I express gratitude right now, it's mostly around just sharing with someone how I felt, uh, you know, with something that they did. And there isn't any request that's coming up apart from maybe, and I don't know how to frame it, but it would be wonderful to know if how how is it that they feel when I share this. Well yeah. done, but not Beautiful. exactly framing it this way. Beautiful. I, I love the way you said it. How is it for you to receive this from me? <clears throat> yeah, I love that request. Yeah. That would be what we call a feedback request. And <clears throat> it opens up the channel so that now you get to move to empathy and they get to um, express their honesty. So it's a beautiful, beautiful request for me. <laughs> I love it. Okay, anybody else before we go to small groups and share about your experience? You can help each other edit it if you want to or get some advice. Jim, what yeah. if um, this is a person I haven't talked to in a long time and 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 it's sort of a little bit of an amends as well. Is that okay? Sure, yeah, it's mm -hmm. lovely. Okay. It may not be the whole thing that you write, you know, but it's certainly something that could be included in, in, in your letter. And it might even be a great way to open up a, a new connection that's been um, um, languishing for a while. Great idea. Okay, so let's go to... And I would just say, check it out with the people that you're with in your breakout group, and you'll get some feedback there too. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Uh, 12 minutes plus one. Sit on your hands when little... Um, clue comes back that we're coming back to the main room here. All right. See you soon. Here we go. So it's fun to see you all back here again on my screen, wondering who wants to share what this has been like for you so far. And all comments are welcome, whether you're enjoying it, whether you have questions, whether there's something that's sticking in your craw about it. Go ahead, jo Juliana. Yeah, so I'm so grateful for, to my group. I'm so grateful for this practice. Uh, it just reminded me about when I take, when, uh, when I take in, um, take in, you know, and feel that feeling of gratitude. When I take the love in of somebody else and feel grateful. So I'm taking the love in into every cell of my body. I'm uplifting myself. I'm growing love in myself. So I'm growing self-love and self-acceptance for myself so that I can give the love to others and I can uplift others. So I just became very aware of this. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It sounds like you're really connected to, um, it's like a virtuous feedback loop of compassionate giving and receiving that happens when we do this kind of a practice because we are nurtured by just this simple act of connecting to the gratitude. And then we give them the gift of us sharing our gratitude. Now they've received something and that's likely to stimulate something wonderful for them to experience. And maybe then they let us know how that was for them to feel. And you end up in this wonderful little um, exchange of giving and receiving. That's really the world that I want to live in. Mm -hmm. Thanks for highlighting that, Juliana. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Anybody else? And thanks. What else did you learn or get in touch with as you did yeah. this practice? What did you discover? Yeah, Rob? Yeah, it, it's more just uh, hopefully some clarification. Uh, I remember there are certain types of requests. We were just talking 
you know, whether we like using requests, I don't get to that part, but I remember there's a confirmation request and there's a request for, you know, actually the uh, need to be met that's not met. Is there any other type of requests? I usually I usually classify this into three requests, an action mm -hmm. request, which is where you ask to another person to do some kind of a behavior uh, that mm -hmm. you think will contribute to your well-being. So action request, then um, feedback request, which is uh, what? how do you feel hearing this from me or how do you feel noticing that this happened or just getting some feedback, uh, basically an invitation for them to share their honesty. And then the confirmation request uh, is to make sure that the message that we intended to send actually got through to the other person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how it might come up in a gratitude letter is, I'm hoping that you'll get this uh, in the spirit that I'm giving it, which is uh, in the in spirit of celebration. So uh, would you be willing to tell me uh, if uh, uh, what, what you hear is important to me or something like or that? Or how that lands for you. Or... Yeah, that lands, yeah. Well, yep. Thank so you. Three kinds. Does that help, Rob? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What I notice about requests is that um, it, I used to tell myself that the request was the hard part <laughs> of NBC because, uh, and it was hard for me in the beginning because I didn't know what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I just knew I knew that there there was something that I wanted, but I didn't know what it was, and so I would find myself just kind of talking. And then I would be done. And then, and then there would be like this uncomfortable silence. And it's like, okay. So what would fill in the uncomfortable silence would be something natural. Like, how is that for you? That would be the feedback request. Or what you hear was important to me, the confirmation request. Or uh, is there anything that you would like to say? Another kind of feedback request. And that just keeps the loop going. So what I've learned <clears throat> is that if I get clearer about why I'm opening my mouth in the first place, the request comes naturally. So if I'm if if my need is around expressing to Jory something about, you know, some pain or something that's not working for me or whatever, then I probably want to slow things down and make sure that the message that I send is getting across as my need and not as a judgment of her or a criticism of her. Yeah, that there's some quality of connection that's established and um, anchored in the beginning of the conversation. Yeah. And so, um, and then sometimes I'm just opening up the conversation because I'm, I'm wanting to learn something or to collaborate together. So that's where a feedback request naturally occurs. And sometimes I just need help. You know, like, uh, and, and George really done a, you know, I really appreciate that. Uh, here comes a little quick gratitude letter. Jory, Jory keeps encouraging me to ask her for help. She says, ask, 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 you know, give her the chance to say no. If I don't give her the chance to say no, I don't give her the chance to say yes. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, I'm, I'm learning. It's embarrassing sometimes, uh, you know, uh, for me to ask for help. And yet every time I do, and then she, you know, it's like the other day, I, I was feeling a little uh, jet laggy and headachey and migrainey. Mm -hmm. And, and I, and I was really squirmy, but I said, would you make me some eggs? <laughs> you know, would you make me some scrambled eggs with green chili? And she did, you know, and it was delicious. And she had a smile on her face when she brought it to me. So mm -hmm. my asking gave her the chance to say yes and to contribute to making my life more wonderful. How do you feel hearing that? Oh, I'm, I'm delighted. <laughs> I feel better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have any, any comments about the practice before we do the next one? Because there's another one coming. You, you know, Jim, I just had one other comment. I raised my hand again, but I didn't see it. Uh, yeah, I do like the request because you can request, you know, how they feel about something because often things jump right to the strategies, especially with my guy friends like, oh, you can do it this way. You can fix it that way. The fix it jackal comes in so fast. And then, yeah. and then that's all it is. It's just all the strategies. You, you try this, 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 this. Let's get this fixed and over with, you know? Yeah. yeah. You're heavy. Yeah. Slowing it down <laughs> so, to get yeah. to the feelings is a way yeah. to kind of slow it down to get connected. Is that right, Rob? And so that that whatever strategies do come here and have more confidence will serve life. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Makes sense. 
Okay, so if you got your letter uh, ready to send and it's an email, please press send now. Mine's not quite ready, so I can't do it. But if yours done, go ahead and send it. Go ahead and into the chat. No, no send actually it. send it oh, to the send person. it to the person. Yeah, send it to How the cool person. How cool is that? Yeah, make it happen. I have a question, Jim. Okay. Um, and Jory, I'm one time I, I read this trainer who said to um ask the question ask the question whose answer you're actually afraid to hear how, how do you like so mine i alluded to was sort of you know this person i haven't talked to in a while and it didn't wasn't you know so great when we left lost touch and you know how do you how do you th what do you think about um a request at the end that's sort of like i'm i'm wondering how you feel hearing from me should yeah. i leave it there or should i be asking the question that i'm afraid to hear the answer to like i'm wondering if you don't want to talk to me or something like that you know yeah it seems like the first part of it is actually asking the same question but not putting it in a box like the second part so, so in a way, so, open this in yeah, first, right? yeah, yeah, and, and I, I guess uh, I'm in harmony with what Jory says, and also with email. I think email really sucks yeah. for anything that's deep. Yeah. <clears throat> so you know, if this is a, a a connection that you want to reopen, it might be a great chance for expressing your gratitude and then making the action request. I'd love to reconnect uh, and say why. Uh, how would you be willing to make an appointment with me um, uh, within the next three days or within the next week so that we can have uh, half an hour to catch up yeah and then you'll find out so uh, and then you can do it actually instead of doing it uh, through email which is so um, it's so cold. it's cold and it's also so easy to misinterpret uh, with because we lose we're losing our body language and tone and so many nonverbals. So should I not put the gratitude in there, please? No, I put the gratitude in. Gra gratitude is the one exception. The two things that I find uh, helpful, uh, email helpful for, is expressing gratitude. Who doesn't want to receive a gratitude? You know, right. <clears throat> in most cases. And then the other thing is for clarification, Clar yeah. clarifying uh, when, where, who, what, how, th those kinds of things. Yeah. But in terms of exploring depth, mm -hmm. it's like mm, it hardly ever works out the way I wanted to. Yeah. <clears throat> it usually makes things worse. And even expressing our care and you know affection and things like that, it's it's not quite the same when you're not really in the same place at the same time. Yeah. How, how does that sound to you, Patricia? Really scary. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for your honesty. I mean, not and not just your honesty to us, but your honesty to yourself, even to know that that's the truth for you right now. It's scary. And I guess the question that arises, and you don't need to answer it right now, is what's what's the worst thing that can happen? You know, that question for me is always helpful when I feel scared. You know, what's the, what's the worst thing? And, you know, or, the real threat. Yeah. The real threat is another way of saying it. Yeah. So how is it for you to hear that? I'm intrigued by what came up for me. So, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> what, is there something else that came up for you? I'm intrigued now, too. I'm actually afraid that she would want to be friends again and that I would run into the same issue that I had when we were friends way back when. It... So there's some self-care in there that you really want to prioritize too and make your decisions with that in the forefront. That makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah, important to notice that. So you can build in your guardrails, you know, as you as you explore whether you want to reopen this this connection again, this involvement. Yeah, it's sort of like when you're at the ocean and you just put your foot in, or even the bathtub. You ever see what the temperature is? 
you know, you do, you put your foot in a little bit and then you check it out first if you don't feel totally safe. That makes sense. Yeah. Thank is, you. Yeah. Is You're there welcome. more? Is there more or does that feel complete? He said, thank you. Yeah, I'm confused about what to do, but that that's okay. It's, I, I don't want to take the time up. I don't want to take all the time here. So, sure. Yeah. yeah. So, but by the way, an, another great strategy when considering um, a conversation that might be uncomfortable, like Patricia's uh, thinking about, is doing it as a role play with an empathy buddy. And you might start with you being you and the other person being the other person and then do that for a while and then switch and you be the person and let the other person be you. And that way you can experience both ends of the conversation and your brain gets some practice. That can be really helpful in exposing uh, exposing your needs that might be otherwise uh, hidden. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And I want to say thank you to Janelle. I see that someone asked for some information and support and you responded. You know, just in, in the chat. Yeah. In thank the you. chat. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Elspeth, go ahead. Um, I just, in response to the last person that spoke, I, um, I'm really thankful to hear that little dialogue because I have, uh, in the bottom of a long list of things to attend to, I have a friendship like that that I also comes into mind to want to attend to it sometime. And I just thought, um, um, Jim, that, that conversation that you said once when I'd asked some a question about a complicated relationship you talked about the difference between connection and involvement and I just wanted when the last person just spoke I I just got something really for the first time that we can ask maybe to slow down a conversation and ask for some space to connect but it doesn't have to immediately equal becoming involved with that person again and to just give yourself permission to have the empowerment that you need around how involved you get with someone or how much time you're offering them or how much time you're requesting of them, how much connection you're requesting of them and that it's okay to have parameters around, um, you know, something like wanting to express gratitude or care for someone and then also still being very active about choosing, but only for two hours this month and then not again for a few years or something like that, you know, just to um, slow that process down. Yeah, I'm really Absolutely. thankful for those two words. Yeah, yeah I'm really, connection I'm really appreciating and involvement. The, the, the care that I'm hearing in what you say, that, that you actually take it as an opportunity to find out and, and follow your needs rather than any shoulds in your uh, that might be um, installed in your brain, that you can take it slow and one little step at a time. You don't have to like uh, open up the door to become best friends and overnight sleeping buddies again or whatever it is. You can just maybe talk on the phone once a month or whatever to kind of gradually figure out what your um, involvement, what kind of comfort level you have with your involvement. Perfect. All right. Anybody else? Okay. So let's practice again then. Oh, did, did everybody send your email? Anybody need a second just to push send? Because I want you to really enjoy the gift that you just gave by pressing send. And just notice the, the need of yours that might be met by expressing your gratitude. This is the fuel source that Marshall was talking about. And if you don't, if you don't feel ready to send it yet, that's fine. You just just maybe you want to do a little more polishing before you, you feel ready to send it. There's no, you take your time. That's that's Marshall's advice. I like that. Take your time. So let's do another one. <clears throat> this one um, is called a golden oldie. And that's, yeah. that's a phrase I got from Marshall. So now you think mm -hmm. of somebody that may no longer even be on the planet but you're going to write a letter to them anyway. And so um, <clears throat> pick out, um, you know, maybe it's a, a childhood friend. Maybe it's a relative that was important to you during your childhood or a neighbor. 
Um, maybe it's a historical figure that uh, you read their book or, you know, whatever. You just find somebody that, uh, that gave you a gift a long time ago. But the, the, um, the ripples of that gift continue to be felt in your life today. <laughs> so, for example, uh, I'm going to pick um, Mr. Tardo. Now, Mr. Tardo was my teacher in the fifth grade. And I liked Mr. Tardo because he was, uh, first, he was the first male teacher that I ever had. All my teachers had been women before. And so this was a, a male teacher. He had a big nose like me. And so I had this sense of affinity. This is a guy like me. Uh, and, he, and he was also short like me. And so I had this kind of sense that somehow we're in the same, we're, we're somehow the same. And Mr. Tardo had um, a, a, the gift that he gave me was um, he gave me the opportunity to contribute. Uh, somehow he caught that um, I, I was a real eager learner and um, that I, I really wanted to, he was social studies teacher or something like that. And I really wanted to learn from him. So I asked lots of questions and I read all the assignments and I was really engaged. And he actually invited me to, um, to spend extra time uh, like after class. Now this sounds like it could be a little dangerous, but it was actually, you know, it was a public school and the doors were always open. There was nothing untoward that happened, but he actually invited me to like become his assistant a little bit, like clean the blackboard or clean the erasers. So these kinds of things that, that really probably, um, I, I don't, I don't want to put any, any uh, judgments on them, but <clears throat> um, so he, he invited me to, um, to help him, to assist him in his classroom. That'd be how I, I might put it. So pick of who you want to write to and what, what did they do? What was the gift that they gave you that still ripples in your life today? And write that down. Sorry, what was the question? Yeah, you got the, the question is to think of somebody from your past that gave you a gift that still reverberates from your long ago past, maybe 20 years ago or 30 years ago or 40 years ago, but a gift that you still savor today. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Is it okay if they've passed away? Yes, I would expect they might be. Okay, thank you.
If you're finished with that step, you can start thinking about needs. What needs of yours were satisfied when you received that gift? So I put it into the chat in case that's helpful. Third question is what needs of yours are fed by receiving this gift? So in my case with uh, Mr. Tardo, it was like it was like acknowledgement somehow to, to matter. Uh, he saw me as a human being rather than a kid. So there it was like a meta need for um for um, dignity, that be might be the my current word to use for it is dignity. Mm -hmm. Is that one, Drew? Yeah, I was um, tuning into when um, our son, our oldest child, was about eight months old. I suddenly realized that I was pregnant. I. I believed, well, you, I think, told me, but I, I'll try not to blame you, and it actually worked out well, that, that I couldn't get pregnant again while I was nursing. That's not true. <laughs> and so here I was, eight months pregnant, and um, I, I mean, an eight-year-old baby. Eight-month-old baby. Eight-month-old baby suddenly realizing I'm pregnant, and we're struggling financially at that point in our lives. And so I, Jim and I traded off taking care of the kid and who, the baby, and he was there. And I left about six o'clock in the morning so that I could go get a test um, and he could go off to work when I got back. But, and the test came back positive and I walked in the front door and I said, Yes, I'm pregnant and I'm getting an abortion. And then Jim sat down on the couch and cried. And I just didn't know what to do. I just sat there and tried to figure out what I was going to do next. And what's the next? Where, where? Yeah, I went to this. There. Oh, right, 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 right. I met somebody who I, in our community who actually had me talk to this baby and find out why, why it was coming. And what I heard was it was coming for our daughter, our son, our son that's right. He was uh, coming for our child. And of course that changed everything. That was the, you know, sure, of course, I want my baby to have everything that it might want. And so the gift was actually having this conversation with the therapist and which created this insight in you and this shift. And what needs of yours were met by having that conversation with the therapist? Oh, my God, I got so clear. The need um, for well-being was on the table. And it was, oh, my well-being would be impacted by having another baby. But also my need for well-being for my child. Yeah. And here I had a son. I wanted him to have everything he 
would want and need in his life. So it was really about clarity and well-being for you. Yeah. So what, what and, and gifting. Yeah. yeah. So what was the need for you? So take a moment to really settle into what needs of yours were satisfied then and continue to reverberate now in your life. What are the needs? when people put them into the chat helps me to connect with what's going on for you mm -hmm. thank you and as you connect to the needs and tune into your body notice the sensations and emotions that are alive in you right now that's where the giraffe fuel comes from. How do you feel right now remembering that you received this gift? Even if it was, in my case, it was 60 years ago, almost 58 years ago. And yet right now I feel warm and uh, I feel this sensation of wanting to smile in my cheeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of um, oh, a, a pressure underneath my eyes was like this fond teariness of being touched by this man's kindness mm -hmm. to, uh, to children. I'm sure I, I just generalized that he treated all children with this quality of warmth. I just got to feel special in that moment. Yeah, and for me, I feel such appreciation such gratitude, life-changing, just so glad. And you just savor these feelings. It's more important that you savor the feelings than you write them down. You can always write them down in reflection later, but to just let yourself really feel the feelings. Mm -hmm. That's where the fuel comes from. Mm -hmm. When when you have the sense that the energy is beginning to shift, what would you like back? What's the request? Do you want some feedback? Even if it's only an imagination. Person may be gone. Mr. Tardo's probably long gone. <laughs> but I, I can imagine writing him this letter and him opening up. And, and then I would end with, the, would you write back and tell me what it's like for you to receive this letter? out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And I'd really like to know how it affects him to, to get this acknowledgement. Yeah. What's, what's your request? I see acceptance, love, open-hearted joy, grateful. Yeah, wonderful feelings. And then the request, uh, just to remind you, there could be an action request, could be a confirmation request, or a feedback request. <laughs> In my case, it's confirmation. I would say, oh, I wonder if you remember that. Hmm. So I'm going to reopen the rooms again so that you have a chance to talk about this 
exercise, how it was uh, different for you or how it was the same or what's alive in you now having had a chance to practice a golden oldie. And uh, then we'll come back in um, about 15 minutes or so for our checkout. Yeah, I'm just going to say I identified that wrongly. It was actually a feedback request, yeah. not a confirmation request. <laughs> Good catch. Okay. Enjoy your small group. Might have to do a little adjusting here to reopen the groups. All righty. Okay. How we keep growing every time we come back, there's more people in the group. It's really fun. <laughs> so um, let's find out how this practice was for you. It's a little bit different. And uh, Rob, please go ahead. You know, I'm sorry, Jim. I I skipped to another practice. Is that okay to sure. talk about it? Or yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's just that I. I uh, the the situation. I wanted to listen to music with a friend, and uh, she always is saying that I have. Oh, I I have. I'm such a great ta uh, talker, and she loves talking with me. Then at the end, I said, "Oh, you know, my back is hurting," and then she said, uh, "Well, you know, uh, I told you this thing from Doctor Cerno, and." All you have to do is read it and just yell the parts of how it's, you know, it's psychological and you're doing this, and you're doing that. And I, I was a basket case and I read that and, and how come you didn't do that? And I just went into, um, I don't see you now. I'm here. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and I just wanted to, all I could do is rebel or submit. And so I submitted. I just said, you're right. Send me that again. And I'm really going to cure myself. <laughs> like, and then my response was, I never want to talk to her again. I can't. And then I thought, wait a minute. No, this is the NBC homework. Yeah. How can I talk to her? How can I reason with her and tell her what, you know, that was, that was fix it, Jackal. But how can I, and I, I'm at a loss. Do you have some ah, verbiage for? I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because it's actually uh, the, the third practice that we didn't get to today. So maybe we'll do it next week which is to think of something that ended up being an irritant, like this was an irritant for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yet, since then, you have come to grow from yeah. this happening. I so, wanna. So you you would you would write a little bit about the insight, maybe in your case, mm -hmm. you're talking a little bit about how you, you realized you fell into the trap of either rebelling or submitting. and Yeah, yeah. And that stimulated resentment in you and and mm -hmm. how kind of noticed that happening and have grown from it. So you really really appreciating that this thing happened to you, even though you wouldn't wish it on anybody, including yourself. Oh yeah. Yeah. You. Yet there's still the sense of of growth and learning and mm -hmm. self-awareness that you're savoring from it. Is that accurate? Uh sort of, but uh I was looking for an easy answer, like say, ba 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 ba, you know, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix it myself. I want to fix it, you know. Yeah. I hear you, you know, I'm getting the feedback from real life situations, and that's, and I'm looking at it. I'm not looking away from it. So that's growth. Yeah, that's growth. Yeah, and celebrating. Yeah. I suppose if you want a quick fix thing, you just say, thanks, thanks for the conversation. And, um, you know, I've learned something from it. It could be that. Kind oh, of yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. She yeah. might be curious. So, well, what did you learn? And now you've got a dialogue going. Yeah, I learned you're full of shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Yeah. Oh, maybe I'm that phrase is a little different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's called speech. Right? Yeah. Thanks, thank you. All right. Thank you. Somebody else got some feedback about um, about a golden oldie. Yeah, Cecilia. Yeah, I can share. Um, I think that one was really profound, you know, in looking back at all of these people, ancestors, and how they, they're they still present today. Um, and particularly, I think, for me, like someone that really 
saw me in positive regard <laughs> and appreciating how that stayed with me, how that keeps me coming back to this aspiration of expressing these qualities, like knowing that I have them and remembering that I can express them and make my life and everyone's life around me better for that. And at the same time, it's, there were so many um, hard moments, you know, with the same person. And it's just like this practice of gratitude just puts things in perspective that, you know, I mean, relationships can be hard and difficult, but then there's this, like this one diamond <laughs> that makes it like so precious and valuable and and profound that it's like if we look at that more often right yeah more of that balance in there yeah yeah Thank how how, how wonderful that the insight that i'm savoring that that i'm picking up from what you share is that Within every morning, there's a celebration. Mm -hmm. Within every celebration, there's a morning. Mm -hmm. That there's no such thing as a perfect strategy. So even with a like a relationship like this, that's about forty five years old or something like that, you know, it's been the most pleasant and the most painful relationship I've ever had. Because it matters so much. Yeah, and it's just complex. Yeah. We human beings are complex. We're we've got all these needs going. Her needs and my needs and and so forth and sometimes they go into conflict and we go bump and that's when it's painful and then there sometimes there's just this feeling of being enmeshed in uh in uh like gears that are just uh going and that's something to savor as well so and then sometimes you get sand in the gears so it's it's always <laughs> both and that's just so precious for me to hear you uh realize and say, say it out loud that every relationship has these both these pieces in it. Yeah, we have two more messages, and so we're getting close to the end of yeah. our not messages. Thank you, Cecilia. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, thanks for the space. It's really great to see you two guys again. Uh, and thank you for putting on, you know, setting up facilitators for us to keep practicing in your absence. That really was meaningful. You you look wonderful, the two of you together. I'm seeing closeness oh, and like, I, yeah, there's like a refreshment in in what I see in you. Anyway, thank you for that. Um, it was really meaningful to me that I wasn't anticipating having a really meaningful experience because I came in late, and so I thought like, ah, oh, I missed it, you know. But it was really good. I reflected on my my grandfather who taught me how to weld, and. Um, yeah, it met all kinds of needs, but the one that stood out to me was um, the need, like a sense of place. The workshop, you know, is is like a hundred year old stump in the ground that I can return to, you know, and I can always remember the meaning of that place, and that's really powerful for me. And the the need that resonated is for confidence to be able to create things. And like, I just carry that with me because my grandfather could do it. And he told me I could do it and I can do it, you know? Um, and so, yeah, the last bit, you know, the request would be that he, and I'm saying it to you, like I said it to my group, because I want it to be true so bad that he would keep coming back to me. Mm -hmm. And his mem memory of him would teach me how to be a man that's gentle and kind and generous. Mm -hmm. So I'm really grateful for the opportunity to go through this thank you for the gift you're very welcome jeff i'm glad you came yeah and thank you for sharing that asta uh yeah i uh there are two things on my mind um number one is when i was trying to there was somebody who came to my mind before the person with whom i then practiced the exercise and uh, as I was thinking of gratitude, a lot of mourning was coming up for me repeatedly. And my energy was going towards that sadness, even though I was thinking about all the things that they'd done for me and they were absolutely beautiful. And then I realized it was um, maybe a lot of other needs were showing up. So I moved to another. So I got very curious about, you know, how 
how that sadness really showed up. That was the that was the first thing that came up for me in the exercise. And it's somebody who's not here anymore. So I also understand that that possibly changed. Um, that yeah, that. And uh, the second one uh, was in our group while I was sharing and um, my practice partner reflected on how it was for her to hear all of this. And there, there, was, a, uh, there was a reflection on how some of the needs that I was wanting to meet through my request can still be met even if I don't meet that person. And, uh, and it was so powerful for me to hear that because I realized that a part of why I celebrate that person is also because I am actually meeting those needs and I am contributing to the world in that particular way. And so my gifts are like the way I can offer gifts to the world is so much because of what I received from them. So it was just just sweeter in that moment, just that realization. I was like, wow, that possibly is part of the contrib- the, the celebration as well. Um, I'm very grateful for that noticing. Thank you. And th- thank you for like underlining the chain of being, you know, as, as both you and Jeff were talking about in, in connecting to, to ancestors and, and golden oldies, you know, I, every once in a while, I will just stop myself in awe. Like I'll, I'll, I'll be doing something like, um, I don't know, cutting something in the, in the garden with a knife. And suddenly I'll think I didn't invent this knife. Some ancestor figured out how to work with metal thousands and thousands of years ago and i'm i'm standing here with this knife in my hand because of of him or her or them that did that and so it just it's just this this link of our of our of the great chain of our human family so thank you <clears throat> so we're at the top of the hour almost really had fun uh, reconnecting with you all today and it's fun seeing you we will we'll, we'll come back next week and i think we'll just continue this this um <clears throat> this exploration around gratitude get some more more avenues to explore mm-hmm. and if you're celebrating uh thanksgiving uh this week in the united states or somebody else somewhere else then bring this bring this attitude of gratitude to the to the meal use all your nbc skills uh you'll be i'm totally confident that no matter who's at the table you'll be one of the most competent communicators um, that's possible there that so you can create peace at your dining room table in a way that most uh, most of us haven't been trained to do so please take that responsibility and and um, and do lots of listening and uh, empathic reflection and and avoid the jackal traps of fix-its and and advice and and uh, yeah. my favorite one, trying to convince somebody that they're wrong. And so even if you're not an American <laughs> joining in on some sort of holiday, there are people around you that you can do that with as well. So make peace this week and then come back and celebrate with us uh, next week and tell us what you learned. Until then, uh, we will see you. If you want to give a donation to uh, support um, the folks of Maui as we continue to recover, please go to MauiFoodBank.org. I'll put it into the chat and uh, give a pay it forward. <clears throat> Send them 20 bucks and say, please feed people because uh, there's hungry people here. Mm-hmm. Or if you want to give something locally in your own uh, neighborhood, please do that. <clears throat> and just let us know you did it so we yeah. can savor your gift. That way we get to get to enjoy it. Yeah, sweet. Yes, I was going to say the same, how sweet it is when I read the contributions that any of you have made. Uh, it's like a piece of my heart. It's, it feels like you're giving it to me in a way, because on in the world. So we will open up the after party, new groups, randomized, and uh, don't expect you to stay, but uh, feel free to stay and hang out for as long as you like. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> We'll see you next week. Aloha. Aloha, Jim. Aloha, Jory. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Aloha. 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 Bye. 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 Have a good Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.